Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. It is a blessing to come before you once again. I give all honor, glory, and praise unto the Most High, the Lord God of Israel. So continuing on in this book of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, make sure you do have your Bibles out that you may follow along and read the scriptures with me. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and it reads, Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. So who is like our God? Okay. Having God's word in your heart and your mind, it can cause your face to shine as if you were um, just glowing, you know, being filled with that light, with the word of God in you. It does make a difference, and people can see this light that is in you. Verse 2, I counsel thee, King Solomon, saying, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. So let's turn to uh, the book of First Chronicles, chapter 29. Hold your place there in Ecclesiastes, chapter 8. And we will turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And we're going to read in 1 Chronicles 29, uh, verses 10 through 19. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, 10 through 19. And it reads, Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel our father forever and ever you see so king david is uh, blessing god as we should always bless god but he's also going to uh, bestow a blessing upon his son king solomon who is going to take the throne after him okay and so um going down to verse 19 verse 11 re reads Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee and thou reignest over all and in thine hand is power and might and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, O God, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Again, I'm in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. But who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners as we as were all our fathers our days on earth are as a shadow and there is none abiding O lord our god all of this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own i know also my god that thou triest the heart and has pleasure in uprightness as for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee, and give Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. So we see in verse 19, King David bestowing that blessing upon his son, King Solomon. He prayed for his son as we should pray for our sons and our daughters, even if you do not have physical children, you look at these other Israelite children and you see them as your sons, your daughters. 
okay? And so um, when we go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 2, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard of the oath of God. Okay, so King David set a good example. He left a very good example for his son, King Solomon, to follow. And we should also walk in the footsteps of these good uh, kings, as well as our greatest king, King of Kings, which is the Lord Jesus. So we need to keep God's commandments, okay? And now um, there was something else in First Chronicles chapter 29. Let's see. I think it was 23 through 25. So um, going back to First Chronicles chapter 29, I'm going to read 23 through 25. It says, Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father. And again, his father David, King David, he set a good example for his son, and he instructed and led his son into the paths of righteousness. And this is what the fathers are to do, as well as the mothers. You lead and instruct your children in right paths that they may follow and go into. And there's none better than following this word of God. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David, his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. Verse 24 in First Chronicles chapter 29. And all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed unto him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. So when you walk before God in uh, righteousness, doing that which he has commanded you to do, keeping the oath of the king, as it said in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard of the oath of God. When you do this, God will bless you. He will prosper you. He will set a table before you in the midst of your enemies. Right here in captivity, you can be blessed by following the most high. Okay. And now verse three, back in Ecclesiastes chapter eight. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. So don't be so quick to go out of the sight of God. You stay in his presence. You dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, as it says in Psalms chapter 91. He will be your protection. He will be your shield. He will be your guide. He will go before you. So don't be so hasty, so quick to want to turn back into the world to want to go and look back into the old days, that which you did before, you know, you are now walking uh, with God. You are going forward and keeping the king's commandment, keeping the oath of God, the promise of God, which is his word. Okay. And now verse four, where the word of the king is, there's power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? So who are we to question anything that God does? He does it all by his own might, his own power. He does not need us to question him. Okay? And so there is power in this word of God because this is the word of a great king. Verse 5, Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart meaning his mind discerneth both the time and judgment. Okay, going on to verse six, because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. You know, knowing that one day uh, you will, there will come a time when you will have to stand before your creator, your maker and answer for the things you've done and said in this life, in this flesh and blood body, 
we see. Verse 7, For he knoweth not that which shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? There is no man that has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither has he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. And so uh, no man has power to retain the spirit. What does this mean? Well, that spirit is the breath of life that's in you. When it is your time to leave this earth, you know, God only knows the very hairs of our head are numbered. And so you're not going to get out of death. You're not going to escape death. No matter how many surgeries you see people getting, um, no matter how much medications they're taking, trying to prolong their lives, no matter how much they scream, kick, fight, and fuss in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, you know, in great misery, trying to hang on, trying not to let go. God, when God says, that's it, your time is up, the breath of life is taken from you, then that's it. You see, so that's a battle, that's a fight, a war you cannot win. You cannot get out of death when it is your time to leave this earth. That is why it says here that there's no discharge in that war. You're not going to get discharge or out of it. Okay. So sometimes people don't like to think about or speak about death, but it is a part of life. You were born into this flesh and blood body, right? As a mortal man and woman. And this flesh, it gets old, it gets weak, it gets tired, and it returns back to the dust from which it were formed. But if you trust and believe and serve God, you know there will come a day when he will resurrect you from the grave and give you a spiritual body, a mortal body that goes on to live forever. Okay, and that is what I'm fighting for. That is what we all should be fighting and striving for to uh, live and reign and rule with Christ as an immortal in eternal life. And it says here in verse 8, at the end of verse 8, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. Because you have a lot of people who believe, oh, if I just sell my, my soul, you know, if I just serve the devil, that somehow he's going to bless me, all will be well. And then um, somehow I'll go on and live forever and never die. Like these people have really been deceived who have been given, uh, given themselves unto Satan. Okay. And that is what the devil does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so he has made men and women believe that they themselves are gods. But wickedness is not going to deliver them from death. Verse 9, all this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. So uh, turn back to Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 8. And it says, if thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, Marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Okay, and so um, when it says in going back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 9, all this have I seen applied my heart to every work that is done under the sun on this earth. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And you go back and you read the book of Judges and you learn about our God and what he's capable of. When our people, when they crossed him, when they did evil and wrong before his sight, he would raise up another nation to come against him. But then that nation became prideful and arrogant and he ended up um, judging and um, bringing oppression unto the, the oppressor, you see. So go back and read the book of Judges and learn, you know, every time they would do wrong, God would raise up an enemy and then he would raise up a judge, a deliverer to get them out of that um, oppression. 
And so there are those who rule over others and they do it to their own hurt because God ends up uh, judging the very ones who were um, oppressing his people. Okay, so understand that. And God sees the injustice that is in, um, injustice that is done in this earth today. He sees the prison houses and the jail houses full of people who look like me. And um, they've been put into these places. Some of them, not all, but some of them just for minor things, if anything at all, just being wrongly accused. God sees it. And he will hear their cries and he will bring justice. And the very ones who were ruling over them um, in unrighteousness, they're going to end up being uh, found condemned them own selves. They'll be found judged them uh, themselves. Okay. So hopefully that did make sense. You know, there are many uh, wicked men and women in this earth ruling over um, other men, and they're doing it unrighteously. They're doing it in injustice, um, unjustly, okay? And so um, I do think about my brothers and sisters often, and I pray for them, um, you know, and hope that the Most High will touch their hearts and their minds to come to the knowledge of the truth. Verse 10, and so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. Okay, because even, you know, if you do right in this earth, you know, you're living for God, you're doing righteousness, walking in holiness. That is good. That is what you should be doing, keeping God's commandments, but know that the same place the wicked and those who do wrong and break God's laws, the same place they end up going when they die is the same place that we also will end up going. Okay, and as we read, we're going to find out, you know, all are of the dust, all go to the same place, speaking of the grave. But that doesn't mean, um, oh, well, you know, one day I'm going to die, so I might as well live it up, party it up, you know, do what thou will. Um, live your life, have fun, because when you're dead, you're done. You know, all these these little phrases, uh, cliches, is, is not the right way to be thinking, okay? We should be always thankful unto God for every day that we're alive to see another day, to see the sun rise above the earth, to see our brothers and our sisters showing love to them. Each and every day we should be thankful and not taking our lives for granted, okay? Verse 11, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully sent in them to do evil. So because men and women, they're on this earth, you know, they're not seeing lightning bolts raining down on their heads, right? So they continue to do the evil. They feel like, oh, I did it once, I could do it again, right? Nothing's happened to me yet. I'm already 60, 70 years old, still with my my same man, you know, another man with a man and all this other uh, evil wickedness. And they think to themselves, nothing has happened, right? They feel like they're getting away with it because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, in their heart, in their mind, it is fully set in them to do evil. So they just continue on in the same evil, in the same wickedness, refusing to change their ways. But one day when God does bring the judgment, at that time they'll want to hear, but it will be too late. Verse 12. Oh, let me turn to uh, going back to verse 11. I had uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 14 written down. So let's go back. Let's go forward a little bit and look at Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. 
the very things that they believe they're getting away with, the secret things, whether it's good or evil, God's going to bring every work into judgment. You're going to have to answer to this God. You're going to have to stand before him and give an account of the things you have said and done in this flesh and blood body. Okay. And um, knowing this, Brother Paul, you know, he had wrote, how should we be uh, living? You know, how should we be walking and talking, knowing that uh, the judgment of God is going to come one day? Okay, we need to always be examining ourselves, always be asking God for forgiveness, even if we think we're not doing nothing wrong. In our minds, we should be saying, Lord, forgive me, right? Because we could have a thought and we, not, we don't even know that it's something that's wrong, that's bad. So constantly examining ourselves daily. And so verse um, verse 12 now reads, Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Okay, so again, the wicked, uh, those who do break God's commandments and laws, even though they may live a long life, you know, their days are prolonged, yet surely I know, saith the preacher, right? The preacher gave King Solomon gave the people good counsel because he was the king, okay? As our God uh, has placed this on King Solomon's mind, and so we are reading the word of God. You see, holy men spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So it says in verse 13, But if thou shalt be well, but it shall not be well, Excuse me, it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. So let's turn to the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 15. And I want to read in Proverbs chapter 15, uh, verses 26 through 29. And it reads, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked. Yet you will have wicked people say, God is with me, right? That's what they'll tell you. But here the word of God says, the Lord is far from the wicked, not near unto them, but far from them, from the wicked. But he heareth, God hears the prayers of the righteous. Okay, and now the book of Psalms chapter 37. Turn to Psalms chapter 37. And we're going to read verses 28 through 40 in Psalms chapter 37. And it reads, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. How long? Forever. But it says here, um, I just lost my place, brothers and sisters. I guess I was getting into the word. Proverbs chapter 37, 28 through 40. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. It's in his mind. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. And don't think this is just uh, people of other nations, our own people who are wicked. They watch the righteous and they seek to slay us. They have evil intentions in their hearts and their minds. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. 
wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee. Not another man or woman exalt thee, but let God exalt thee. To inherit the land when the wicked are cut off, thou shall see it. You should see this with your eyes. You shall see it when the wicked are cut off. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a bay, like a green bay tree. Didn't our ancestors see uh, the Egyptians in great power? Were not they spreading themselves just how a green tree would, whose branches would just flourish and blossom and spread out? That's how they saw the Egyptians, right? They were in great power. And it says, um, yet he passed away, verse 36 of Psalms chapter 37, yet he passed away and lo, look, behold, he was not, not found, right? They drowned in the Red Sea, those Egyptians. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. And so shall it be with all our enemies. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. And what makes you perfect and upright? We know no man is perfect, but to keep God's commandments, to walk with God, to do that which he has commanded you to do, that will make you upright. And the end of that man, in the end, you shall have peace. While they are weeping, wailing, mourning and gnashing of teeth, the righteous those who walked with God upright, keeping his commandments, they shall have peace. But the transgressors, meaning the sinners, shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them. Not maybe, not possibly, shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because why? They trust in him. You see, so put your trust in God. So going back to Ecclesiastes chapter eight, um, where we left off with verse uh, 13, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Verse 14 in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men unto whom it happeneth, according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth, according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Okay. So going forward to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2 through 3, and you have to understand that the Bible, um, you know, it were written and the, the men who had, um, you know, translated it, they broke it up into books and chapters and verses, right? But it is all just one long thought, okay? So even though we're skipping ahead to other chapters, understand that um you know the the bible which means binding of many books our scriptures they were uh, split up and broken up into chapters and verses okay so when you go to chapter 9 verses um 2 through 3 it says all things come alike to all there is one event to the righteous and to the wicked to the good and to the clean and to the unclean to him that sacrifices and to him that sacrifices not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth, as he that feareth an oath. So what is this one event uh, that cometh to all? Verse 3, this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun on this earth, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after, this is that event, and after that uh, they go to the dead. You see, all are of the dust and all shall return to the dust again. But the difference is those who 
return to the dust, serving, believing, trusting, having faith in Jesus, keeping his commandments versus those who did not. There is a difference because when they are raised, you see, when they are having to stand before their God, those who did keep faith in Jesus, kept his commandments, served him, loved him, those are the ones who will stand before God and hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant, versus those who did not live for God, did not keep his commandments, did not have faith in Jesus. They will hear, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You see, so all will go to one place, but at the resurrection, there shall be um, a difference made. God is going to separate the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares. Okay, so now uh, going back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse um, 14, that is what happens unto all, which is death, both to the wicked and to the righteous. But how you live in this flesh and blood body will determine where you spend eternity. Do you want to spend eternity burning in the lake of fire? Or do you want to spend eternity in the kingdom of God, walking on streets of gold, having love, peace, righteousness, holiness? I'll take the kingdom of God. Verse 15. Then I commended mirth, meaning laughter or joy, happiness, because a man has no better thing under the sun in this life then to eat, to drink, to be merry, for that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life, which God giveth him under the sun. Okay, because when you start to think about all the evil, all the oppression, all the wickedness in this earth, you know, it can bring great sorrow uh, to your mind, even lead some to be depressed and down and not find any pleasure, any joy in this life because they're so focused on the evil, on the wicked, right? But leave it in the hands of God. Understand that he is going to judge, okay, the wicked. He will pay back those who have rendered evil unto those who did what was right. So then you enjoy what things God may have given you, you know, food, um, Every now and then watch a movie that is clean, right? I said that is clean and do those things which are pleasing in his sight, you know, because uh, you work, you labor, right? And you should be able to enjoy some of the fruits of your labor. If you're a farmer and you're planting crops, you want to enjoy those crops, right? So whatever it is that God has blessed you with or given you, to enjoy in this life, then enjoy those things, okay? We cannot continue to, um, yes, we see the evil, the wickedness all around us, but not uh, continue to, um, you know, worry and stress ourselves out because of those things which we cannot control, right? But God can. God can make all things right, and he will at his second coming. So we just pray for them. We thank God every day for the things he's given us to enjoy. Uh, we enjoy one another as brothers and sisters in love. And, um, you know, do not worry. Do not stress yourself out of those things that you cannot change or those people who you cannot change. Okay? Just pray for it all. And so now in... Um, Verse 16, okay, when I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done upon the earth, for also there is that neither day nor night see asleep with his eyes, then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun on this earth, because though a man labor to seek it out, you know, we are laboring, we're trying to uh, find out and uncover the mysteries of God and these dark sayings and um, learn what the parables mean and all these things, right? Because though a man, um, a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, 
yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. So King Solomon, for all his wisdom, he's acknowledging, I'm a flesh and blood man, right? He's saying, I'm not God. Even though he has given me so much wisdom, more than that which um, all the kings which came before him and after him, he's still acknowledging, though a wise man think to know it, to have all this wisdom, yet shall he not be able to find it, right? So let's turn to um, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And we're going to read verses 1 through 2 and then 12 through 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 2. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were, oh, hold on, I was in chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 2, and then 12 through 13. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, Brother Paul speaking. He's saying, yes, I have um, knowledge of all these different languages and the tongue, meaning the language of the angels, and have not charity, have not love. I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, you know, like a clash, a clashing cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, see that wisdom, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, if I don't have love, I am nothing. And um, shout out to Sister Jazzy Israel. She did a very good job in um, these chapters of First Corinthians chapter 13 you know, what is love? And she had a very good video. Um, I would recommend you to watch Sister Jazzy Israel and her video on what is love. I really enjoyed that video. Thank you, sister. And so now verses 12 through 13 of this first Corinthians chapter 13. For now we see through a glass darkly, you know, like as if you have a glass and it's like tinted, right? Not clear, but kind of tenant darkly, but then face to face. You see, when Messiah comes, we will see things very clear. He's going to make known unto us all things. But right now we know impartial. We prophesy impartial. What little wisdom and knowledge and understanding he's given us. So verse 12 again, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. So he's saying once Messiah, a second coming, then he's going to make known unto us all things, and it will become known who are his and who are not his. It's going to be made known and very clear, those that are sheep and those that are goats, those who were for real and about their Abba's business and those who are playing church is going to become known. Verse 13, and now abide faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is love. Okay, so in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, the last verse, when it says, Then I beheld all the work of God, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it because you are just a flesh and blood man as i am a flesh and blood woman and though we labor to know to understand this word of god we are still just that flesh and blood men and women we are not yet arrived into uh, being adopted into the god family right now we're trying to acquire the mind of christ and then it is second coming shall we have a body like his okay knowing all things at his second coming. And it says, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. Okay, and um, 
That was all I had for today, brothers and sisters. I pray you've gotten some understanding. I do thank you for your time and continue to study the scriptures and see what it is that God is wanting us to learn uh, from his word. God bless and uh, we'll pick up, Lord willing, with Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Shalom.